welcome back to The Geometric View, episode 33, season 3, where we cover the geometry of cymatics. Yeah, that's right. Fractals, frequencies, and filaments. Everything is sound. All things come from sound. I'm your host, Buddy J. Strap in. Please support us on our Patreon link below. Thank you. This is a really special day for me. I don't know about you guys, but it is 8 8 2020. And this is the 33rd episode of the third season here on the geometric view couldn't have planned it any better as far as numbers go uh and i'm i'm happy uh to to be here with you uh michael and chris how's your day going how's your week um uh i'm looking forward to the uh synchronicities of the uh eights and uh going going it's going awesome so far Nice. Good to hear from you and see you uh, again, Michael. Um, how about you, Chris? How you doing? Yeah, doing great. You uh, in line with this? The Lion Lionsgate is that what the Data Association is? I, honestly, Lionsgate. I think I heard it was uh, eight eleven this year, not eight eight. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think between the ninth and the eleventh, technically. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know what Lionsgate is. What is it? It's all energies, man. It's just it's like portals. Oh, it's, yeah, all about, it's all about cycles coinciding with cycles. The energies are crazy around here, that's for sure. It's intersection points of two circles. Um, Our presence to travel. <laughs> yeah. Well, what a better day to do a, an episode on cymatics uh, than today, I guess. That's the episode here. Can I have some rose water, please? Thanks. I got to get prepped for my show. All right, that's good. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to smoke it. I wanted to saturate you. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, welcome, viewers. Welcome, everybody. Uh, the show continues. It must continue. And as it does continue, we get uh, deeper into source. That's what this show is all about. Uh, we have a global uh, geometers meetup, um, and we get into source. What is the geometry of this? Electricity, of charge, of uh, of sound, uh, cymatics, and uh, this this particular day seems to be opening some sort of lion's gate. Um, I just let the energies prevail and kind of ice skate across the surface because the surface tension is where the energy is um, and the information is packed on the surfaces of tension and tensegrity like uh, Buckminster Fuller was talking about. But we know now that it's in cylindrical collimated disks um, and all sorts of other crazy types of geometries that happen with sound and resonance as it moves through different mediums. I can't get into the episode of cymatics without talking about how sound's gonna be moving through different um, mediums, not only water or seeing sa sand on different surfaces and substrates, but it, we're literally going to be um, seeing how, if, if we're not convinced after this episode that the Doherty set has something to do with sound and cymatics that um, then we're not going to be convinced at all because the way that the substrates line up, the way that the geometries line up, uh, it's almost impossible not to uh, to see the synchronicity, synchronicity, synchronicities. Um, so let me share my screen. Hey, buddy, could I inject one thing before you get started with all this? Yes, in please. Terms of, in terms of sound and being super luminal to understand mm -hmm. the role of geometry that um, 
So it's kind of what, what geometry is. It's super luminal sound, sound faster okay. than light. Um, yeah, I just want to inject that, and that's an important uh, perspective to hold when, when looking at this stuff, for me. Okay, I'm looking up superluminal sound. now. It's just fa faster than light. Superluminal right. just faster than light. Now, we can look at some images here, and when the sound barrier does break, there is a certain type of geometry that is exposed, and it's the uh, just like the tip of the blue whirl uh, yeah. geometry. Right. Um, and so th what's interesting is, I, I like how you say it's superluminal, but there are uh, superluminal sound, but there's also subluminal um, sounds that are happening. There's ultra low frequencies, ultra high frequencies, and even frequencies that we don't really talk about much there's a, a geometry that happens when you break the sound barrier. Now, the sound barrier can be broken in your daily, in your home, day to day. Uh, this is a, a sonic boom. You can do it with a towel, uh, and when you get it wet and you whip your friend with it. I always whip my friends with towels. It's super fun, and I don't know, you know what I mean? Um, it's just one of those things that's like, you know, it's antagonistic, like, come on, let's go freaking let's go let's fight or let's play or something either way i've had wars you know i used to go toe to toe with people and do whipping wars and i don't know why that's not a thing that i've ever seen other than when i did it when i was a kid <laughs> but so you can break the sound barrier um and i don't want to get we're going to get into a bunch of different things about sound. Uh, and I want to try to make this around two hours um, because I have family coming over. Uh, so I'm sure we can. We can make this within two hours. And I have appreciative viewers that are happy that I've um, compactified my information. So with, let's... Uh, get going here. We're about nine minutes in, and uh, are there some of uh, Sean Picarsics? You know what? I don't know the name. I can't see the name here um, to give credit. So I'm I, uh, unfortunately, I'm just going to say that on credit unknown to this image. But there's credit in the are name you, here. I couldn't like zoom in on it. Are you familiar with his work? What's that? Are you familiar with Sean's work? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I was actually going to have uh, a somatic artist on the uh, the conversation today, but I didn't plan ahead. Um, I just honestly, it's just the lack of me contacting. I've had many of them on and I've interviewed a few of them. So, but I'm just going to come at it and go at it. You know, we don't, whether it's a, cyma, a cymoglyph artist or a somaticist um, that is, uh, on the call or not, we're gonna go through some work. We're gonna go through some sound, sound healing. It's it's not only about cymatics. This episode's um, gonna be about a lot about sound. So it might be a little bit um, misleading, but in order to fill two hours worth of sound, uh, some space with cymatics, you gotta get deep into sound, how it heals, how um, how ancient it is, how uh, the Tibetans use sound healing, where the bell came from, the bell that's on all the churches and the chapels, you know, that came from Tibet. That's a Tibetan um, Buddhist type of thing. Uh, and and the resounding of the gong, uh, you know, the the there's there's a beautiful a beauty to the resonance so i put together a brief presentation i never finished it um i'm a very busy person but what we can do is hop into the presentation and then jump into um john cyril's work work uh and uh the cymoscope uh or not john cyril um, we'll get into his, we'll get into the cymoscope after this is what I'm saying. So without further ado, 
uh, this is a conversation, so feel free to ask any questions along the the way when I'm moving. Uh, it, and this is a very brief presentation, so present. You guys can see, right? Yeah, yeah, because you asked about that. Okay, yeah, so right. so cymatics, the geometry of sound, and these are images it looks like it says Callaway or something like that um, but anyway these are really beautiful images that I saw and I uh, grabbed this collective and used it for the title I think I can click up or over okay excuse me cymatics cymatics from ancient Greek Romanized Sima lit wave literally means wave um, and pressure pressure and wave is a subset of modal vibrational phenomena the term was coined by Hans Jenny who lived from 1904 to 1972 a Swiss follower of the philosophical school known as anthroposophy I always misproduce that or anthroposophy. How is that pronounced? It's a it's a subset of. Um, it's anthroposophy. Anthroposophy. Okay, it's a subset of theosophy. It's uh, Rudolf Steiner. Yeah, Rudolf Steiner's work off of um, theosophy, right. which went a different way than Helena Blavatsky and. Um, Gurdjieff. Uh, yeah, there's quite a few different schools of thought that came out of uh, theosophy. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting to know. Here's an image of the Doherty set, hexagonally aligned, um, and you can see the the subset of the structure. There's no straight lines here. There's no lines at all. The lines are formed. Um, by the stacking of spheres and the kissing spheres that produce the ligatures from north and south and the north and south polarity and the east and west polarity. Um, and this happens on each fulcrum that comes out of the center of the New Jerusalem, the center of the vessel function, the center of the recursive sun the, the the basically the dielectric resonance that comes along the field aligned current that comes off of the sun. There's a drum beat within a drum beat within a drum beat. And all you're looking at here is the exact same identical drum beat repeating itself at different scalar points, nodal and scalar points off of the center. So in the future we're going to know that there is a lizard inside of this torus and this lizard is dependent on the the life cycle of a moth and this this uh, lily pad over here that that has some sort of bugs that it attracts and it eats them so there's a moth and a lily pad that subsidizes the existence of the toroid of this lizard inside here and this is advanced thinking, but once you start to understand where I'm coming from, then you you can understand that there is there there is every creature is male and female toroid of 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 a helical toroidal path. There's a helical connecting path that comes to the center. Why I'm going into this information is because we're talking about um uh, Cymatics, water, water, memory, the the recursions of uh, the the dynamics of vorticity inside of uh, tinctures or, or inside of cups or dishes, and the cymatics changes based off of the shape that you put the 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 petri dish of the sound and the frequency and the 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 cancellation of the frequency, the interference patterns, it's all interferometry. 
This is all wave interferometry. And I'll go to the next one. When you overlay um, a, a cymatic image, and unfortunately, I'm not sure who this is from either, but at one time I did know, so I can't give credit. So credit unknown until it, it's talked about in the comments here on the YouTube video, hopefully. So, but there's so many cymatic artists out there. So you overlay it and literally you see the exact same patterns you see right here where there's this bell shape that is part of this bell shape. You see the hexagon in the center. You see these little sub vortices, these micro vortices that are branching and breaking right there at the break point in between the cleavage of the uh, toroidal, um, it's literally a Bessel function, so it's the wave. And as, as these shapes create, as these shapes are naturally inherent inside of the frequencies, they are also naturally inherent inside of our organs and inside of our bodies. And life can only exist in certain size vessels. So that was the transposing here, this image, this image, this image. Now we're gonna get into the Bessel function. And what the Bessel function is, this is biophysics um, and bioinformatics and just a whole bunch of other things. I can go on and on and on about this. But what I want to get into in cymatics is I want to I want to branch the idea of the cymatic frequency into a frequency that is naturally inside of the Van Allen belts that's recurring. And if that shape's recurring out there out in space and then it recurs out here and it has it has a connection there's a connectome to it there's a larger connectome to the 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 connection of the two which is an electric connection across a grid or a circuit the next episode we're going to do circuit theory circuit theory and how electricity moves and um, the geometry of circuits but for this episode um as you can see, cymatics is nothing, mostly, mostly nothing that, but what we see on a two-dimensional surface undulating and vibrating and it, it can get gyroscopic, it can start spinning when the frequency, when the wavelengths are short, they produce rotation and, um, and this that, that point right there about when the frequencies are short, they're going to produce rotation is, is a big point. Um, because rotation we see on almost all scales. So the Bessel function. The vibration of a drum head can be modeled with a weave equation in two dimensions. And this article below here we solve specific boundary value problems of two-dimensional wave equations for which we encounter the solutions. So this is a Bessel function. When you move out and you take the initial drum of the sun, it is, uh, it is both direct, it, it, it is alternating current the um, alternating current and direct current from the sun. Now we're going to get into the the fact that um, that they that there's systems that are alternating current and systems that are currents. Um, and I think I might be getting a little bit into next episode. Um, I'm just kind of branching and nipping nipping at the uh, bit here. To move on to the next episode because these are so related um, frequency fractals and fractals frequency and fundamentals um, filaments 
these these are all synonymous and work together to expose day-to-day -day life if we want to understand our reality we un need to understand it on a wavelength so when you understand quantum physics it's getting into the Bessel function and then you start studying more and more this here is uh, I put more of these same images the simoglyphs from the title uh, onto transposed onto the Doherty set here and you can see direct correlations again with how things break along spheroidal boundaries and cavities and this is very similar to bubble stack bubble stacking bubble scaling um, bubble sculpting uh, that that I do and how things connect through through two-dimensional surfaces when they pop when they touch when and three-dimensional um, chirality my voice right now how it's the how it it's a frequency it would produce certain frequencies singing um, produces certain frequencies so what I really want to look at here and I can get more into these images because I shared a lot of them with the group um, is I'll, I'll just continue with this brief presentation here so a Bessel function hypermatch when things seem to overlay uh, in a way that they correlate astronomically and with micro fine details that's a hypermatch so there's hypermatches here that are that are created um, and that are that certain frequencies basically what I'm saying here is every one of the cymatics cymoglyphs can be laid over one of several different types of Doherty sets and Doherty networks and you can get the exact same layout so it's predictive so the geometry it, it's been predictive but it becomes predictive in a set in a manner that you can be able to know how to move through the superfluid of Birkeland currents and crystalline stacking through sound through ohm, through oming and this has been an old ancient practice um, that that Tibetans have done for a long time when you just ohm the ohm itself produces healing inside of your body so there's without a doubt a repetition of the exact same identical Bessel function recurring on all scales a hydrophobic and hydrophilic drumbeat within the drumbeat of all charge and charge separation between double layers between moving uh, moving from one substance to another this 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 is always inherent this drum beat that is sourced from the Sun and repeated on earth as we basically as the energy multiplies as toroidal short circuits across the surface of the earth self-similar fractal recursions like they are dancing replicating anode tufts the mitochondria inside of our cells on a cellular level acts as alphane waves that that constantly reproduce the sonic um, the sonic grid of of electricity inside of the uh, the Schumann cavity so on a cellular level these these alphane waves which I can get into alphane waves um, which we will hear in a minute but it's water loving and water repellent uh, substances uh, inside of our body we have sheaths that repel water and sheaths that that love water so these patterns occur 
within confined geodesic tubes, cylinders, and other vortex-based conical structures. And I can't zoom into it. I tried. So I'm escaping from this. And going into, I talked with them briefly, and we were going to do a podcast, and then all the COVID stuff happened, so which might even be better because you might be used to doing that more now, which a lot of us are more used to. So anyway, this is his, this is his information um, on the cymoscope. But he, this is this is great because his work his work is showing how dolphins uh, communicate and how they visualize their their surroundings three dimensionally inside of something um, that I just by accident was was able to stumble upon. Uh, I'm looking for it here in my notes. I was listening and studying this week, um, trying to get as much information as I could, and then I got distracted by studying circuits because it's so in, so in circuit theory because it's so awesome. Um, so what I want to do is in the background here, I'm going to pull up Facebook. I have some stuff loaded for the Facebook news for today, um, but. Inside the Facebook news for today, or not Facebook news, the Geometric View news on our Facebook page, the Geometric View news. Whether I get a copyright strike or not, we're not making, I'm not making videos for money here. And I'm pretty sure I'd get demonetized either way if I were to try. So this is this is pretty good. I'm gonna keep it playing in the background. And you can see here that there's these uh, these waves, and they start when there's interference. It starts to produce pulsations. these pulsations occur just because of interference. And that's how we know that uh, we are interference patterns. We, literally, our whole life is interference patterns. Everything comes out of sound. All form. Where I have this, these notes here. But it, everything literally comes out of sound. The field creates the form. All forms and bodies are created out of sound, spoken into existence. Whether you believe it's spoken into existence or not, here is the interference pattern undulates. produces pulsations, heartbeats, rhythms, cycles, cyclicity. Cyclicity is vorticity. Vorticity is cyclicity. All of this is, is helical. The entirety of it is, is helical. So entanglement is helical. Helical entanglement. Uh, it, induction is helical. Everything is helical. Now there's these, those look like plasma uh, uh, discs in your back and your spine. I mean, this is very, very lifelike and it's all produced with sound and frequencies. This is an old school cymatic documentary. It's all absolutely beautiful. Now, in this type of geometry, there's convection. And this convection, all, 
all of the geometry mostly in the Doherty set and everything is all heat turning to cold and cold turning to heat, which produces convection, which is how sound works in our cochlea in our ears and the vibratory eddies within the, these, the members of each pair turning in opposite directions is, is how we hear. So there's, this is literally, there's a spin in two different directions and we take it in our two different ears in our bilateral symmetry of our bodies. Two eyes, two noses, two hemispheres to the brain, sound and vorticity moving um, produces the eddies there. Now, I, I think we're, we are all numbers because we are in the circuit and which is hard to kind of comprehend, but we are a certain number distance off of, away from the sun, the source of the sun. And because of that, the Goldilocks belt allows all of the cyclicity to occur on the planet, which in turn allows for the dynamism of life. Um, to to sprout you got to have the cold nights to have the hot days to have the cold nights to have the hot days to have you got to have the moon to create the heartbeat of the earth all these things are cycles and these cycles are sonic and these sonic this is sonic genesis sonobiology and we can see it we can see sound producing itself as spheres here. Sound gathering and nucleating and moving across the surface, becoming bodies and gorging on other bodies to become larger. What's, is it eating? Is it consuming? I mean, as you see this little blob here move, it, it, it eats. It, they, they jump into each other, birth, recursions, fractals. I mean, this is just like a living system here. And this is what living systems do. They replicate. They replicate in order to, to maximize the, their, I don't, I don't really know why they replicate. Do, does anybody know why anything replicates? Evolution. That's a that's a word that's used for sure. It replicates out of ne necessity of the hierarchical systems that are above it. If that if one of those apex predators above another creature were to die, that would be that creature would go out of existence. It replicates in order to sustain the system. System is is but not just by, sustain the system, continuous improvement of the system. And be the system, observe the system, yeah. observe and act as a participant. So as it yes. per participates and observes the same type of look at that. Okay, this is could be an unaware system, and this is an aware system, an unalert system, alert system not afraid system afraid system your body well, the, the nature of recursion buddy is the inside outness the uh the information direction in, inward right from the center of the, of the sphere to the surface of the sphere indeed and it's all spherical the whole yeah. thing is spherical sound is spherical it cascades spherical and it uses the inverse square law and the in, inverse cube law and other laws but we can see that we can see these patterns and we can see that there is one pattern to rule them all like one ring to rule them all it might sound a little lord of the ring ish or it might sound a little united nations united world globalist type of perspective universal no, it's, it's of geometry perspective. but you're it's right there, it is there's a pattern to rule them all and it's all a simplex pattern yep. of a super geometry that that is it, it's 
a, a grid, a master grid for electromagnetic induction. And that's what got by three, six, and nine. And that's what the Doherty set is. The Doherty network is that grid, that master grid. Mm -hmm. It's only a master grid because it's in it's in two dimensions. It's it's two dimensionally drawn. Three dimensionally, it's be a lot harder to show the master grid three dimensionally. There's way more information in the two dimensionality of it. Look at these. Look at these tendrils. This is some of the most beautiful cymatics I've ever seen, and I just found it this week. You know? Like, I paint. I'm an artist. And when I mix, when I mix chemicals that repel themselves, beautiful things happen. And that's what I mean by, earlier by um, hydrophilic and hydrophobic sources. Because it creates that branching Lichtenberg type pattern, you know, when it's a hydrophilic uh, surface, it sucks in, you know, but when it's afraid, phobic, hydrophobic, afraid, it also produces beautiful, gorgeous dendritic patterns, but on the surface. So the dendritic patterns of Lichtenberg figures are a consequence of compression and rarefaction, pressure and the release of pressure a change of yeah. state and they're yeah. all over and it's a vestige of life. It's a, it's an image of life like, or, 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 uh, like we are living on our ancestors homes and their dreams and their hopes, fears and wishes and their material and, and spiritual ideals. We are also living on uh, the, the, antiquity of larger circuits that have formed way before us and we think we have new ideas but these ideas have been recurrent inside the system since it was born and Nothing new under the sun. To, it's just trying to remember how to connect us back to a universality towards a universal um modality but anytime it tries to get to universality i seem it seems like it breaks there's a break in the symmetry and it doesn't allow for it. It's like a, um, what's that? Where it, a short in the circuit where it, it, cause. It's more of a bifurcation body. It's a it separate, is. Yeah. It separates. Yeah. It's a bifurcation. The same thing in mitosis, that same process. That's, that's the nature of correspondence. It happens at all scales. We're going through that now. As a planetary being, we're bifurcating. Oh yeah, hardcore, at a big scale. Yeah. So there's attractors, there's great attractors, and there's great repellers, and that's what I mean by hydrophobic and hydrophilic. In the long scale, these super, these super gigantic galactic Leonikia structures. Look, they dance around like this. These are people walking around on the surface, dude. Look, they're walking yeah. around and they're dancing. They're singing, you know? And and it just... It... Look at this. Spinning around. Gaining height and recognition, prestige larger charge of individuals that have starry eyes that are star beings that intergalactically change our dna just by corresponding with us i mean there's there's solar beings that come out of the sun and they're they're divine messengers and they they we us call we we do what is necessary on earth to help humanity transcend it's not an alien thing we're all aliens here so we can all act like we're aliens if we want if we're having um uh, uh gen uh, uh self dysphoria if, if we're having gender dysphoria self dysphoria we can remember that we are collectively these these sounds and 
we can sing a song and help ourselves feel better. That's why songs exist. Think about how bad things were for kids. And if they just sang a song, and if you just say a prayer, you go to a place that makes you feel better, you know? Like Ring Around the Posy, Pocket Full of po Ashes, Ashes, you know, or whatever. That was because there was people dying everywhere around the people. So they had to sing a song. They had to be merry. You know, there's, there's supposedly people dying everywhere all over from COVID. We need to get together and collectively sing songs and pray for people. You know, well, we're, we're kind of doing that, buddy, indirectly by just focusing on the positive and constructive and building a future instead of resisting. And um, and we're, we're anchor points, right? That's fundamentally what I think that we are in terms of uh, what's to come is is we represent an anchor point and a bridge um, in terms of frequencies um, for these these uh, higher frequencies to come in to to uh, interfere with constructively that uh, without without having that anchor point it's what the egg really represents is that space within which waves interfere to to manifest creation right as you need um you need that gap the gap between the piston and the cylinder um without that the the engine doesn't work you need that that uh that little bit of uh you know yeah. For that's what perspective is. That's everything that we do is perspective is in between two parallel lines that we think meet on the, the event horizon, but never really do. And that's all of this existence is within those two parallel um, surfaces, really, or membranes. It is on the membrane. Too. You know, it's really more like hyperspace is the membrane and I see it more as spheres on either side of a membrane that that interact. And they're doing this. Through those pinch points. Yeah. And I, I found this gentleman here, and this is the same work that I'm working with here, but I had a scaling unit to it. His is uh, in a linear progression and uh, or a uh, field-free... Excuse me, a field free field line current. Um, and it's not showing a uh, projective geometry, so it's it's showing just a straight line is what I'm saying. Um, so excuse me. So if you were to add projective scaling on this and, and, and inner stacking, the inner relationship, the inner correlatory, you'd have the Doherty set. Um, so because when you look at it just line by line, yeah, it is a subset of similar type of interacting toruses, toroidal fields, and that's what produces the cylinder, the collimated cylinder. You have the outside cylinder, you have the inside cylinder, and then an inner cylinder. And that's what the vessel function is, this three-dimensionally projected. So here's a cool image I thought I'd share. Have some dilating vessel functions for the somatic episode here. I mean, we can get into somatics forever and, and show the show the correlations, how it works in different matter in your brain, in your blood vessels, somatic tuning, sound healing, sound therapy. But the, I don't think any I don't think any presentation of cymatics is complete without showing the hexagram on the top of Saturn to for people that don't. So they can really connect it with uh, reality, right? Just to show that that uh, sound is geometry, and and it's it's even shown in the planetary beings, right down to the geometry of our the orbits. You know, it's all five five spiral. Yes, um, the entirety of it is cymatics, and yeah. this is this is what Don Scott's model of a Bessel function with um, opposing currents, counter rotating currents. Mm -hmm that are producing 
these structures that are powerful and long lasting and uh, extremely fine tuned uh, to to the changes inside of the environment of the whole system. You know, the, it's all adaptive. It's it's ultimately uh, what's the type of flow to it? Um, I can't remember the name of the the flow to it. Oh, a di diocatron instability. Uh, there's a diocatron instability inside of the. This happens in fluid dynamics, and oh, here's the images. Start with a sphere of plasma. You push it. The toroidal plasma flow turns into separate nodes. These nodes are vortis vorticity nodes, and they all are harmonic and integrate together as a circuit. So this is integral uh, mathematics, and it's also physics. And this breaks down to show also how the helicon waves and helicon physics break down, which is what we hear in the auroras, and the auroras becoming diatoms and, and algae and plankton bloom and life on Earth. The same type of geometry occurs here. You got toroidal resonance breaking up into separate islands, which is probably how islands form too, and hot spots in the ocean and the ocean bed along the circuitry of uh, the what they call the plates. So if you see the similarities between the separate hexagons here, that's a little different concept than the hexagon on Saturn. The hexagon on Saturn is a permanent um, structure um, that might change, I'm sure, but it's been permanent for as long as we've been observing it since maybe the 70s or something. And there's also hexagons on the bottom of the other planets. Now, when we get into the, I guess we are in the geometry of vortex episode because we're in cymatics and all cymatics is is the vortexture of vortexes and how vortexes relate and communicate through networks and intermingle through other interconnected networks and separate networks um, which is the rheology and rheometry of ah there's two different types of common flows and I can't remember I can't remember the name of either one of them and I'm just trying to remember sorry if I sound stupid but it, it was a good episode that I watched um, on Veritasium I think so so you can look and see cymatics and also geometries on the planets and they all have these sub micro vortices. This one's actually moving. That's insane. Showing a time scale of maybe a couple years. Or who knows how long that is. Maybe just a few days. But the same thing happens on bubble skin on the skin of bubbles you have these vortex geometries that form what's really realities that looks like a picture of the moon or something oh Looks like I got visitors banging on the door. Uh, hang on a second. 
You guys are already here. My mom's a list to annoy you. Oh my gosh. Oh the way. Hey guys, <laughs> hang on a minute. All right, well, we're gonna end this one short. It's gonna be about an hour long. I mean, I was felt like I was kind of trailing anyway. Um, it's a different time today, so maybe some of the viewers will appreciate a shorter episode. I could get into cinematics on much deeper levels, um, and also I am uh, interviewing uh, John Anthony Reed with the Cymoscope, so be looking out for those episodes that are coming here here's electricity um high voltage electricity but for my one of my companies i do fractal branding on uh high end uh you know levels like i want to do houses and i mean like log cabins and uh casinos, like wherever there's large wood that I could electrocute and make these cool, awesome Lichtenberg type patterns in them. That's where I wanna, what I'd like to do. But it looks like we're gonna have to cover the news hour on the next episode. Uh, so thank you for being here, Chris. Uh, if you have anything oh else, any no, other questions? Anything you want to add? Posted, uh, I just posted a link, Geometric Whirlpools. It's a spinning bucket experiment in the, the, the chat that um, was really interesting in terms of, of uh, geometry and this very last one, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Hey, guys, can you go outside for a minute for another, like, 15 minutes? But just something, something to add to in terms of the planets, you know, uh, the spinning and cymatics. Um, the, wow. all, all spinning is geometry. It's where, oh, uh, wow. where, where spinning comes from is geometry. Dude, this is so good. Recipe for making symmetrical holes in water is easy. That's capitation. Is easy. We make it complicated. Right. Dude, that's beautiful. Man, okay. Geometric whirlpools, bizarre geometric shapes that appear at the center of swirling vortices in planetary atmospheres might be explained by a simple experiment with a bucket of water. Researchers at the Technical University of Denmark have been swirling water in buckets. <laughs> <laughs> and Lingby have created similar geometric shapes, holes in the form of stars, squares, pentagons, and hexagons, and whirlpools of water in a cylindrical bucket. Cylindrical is the key here, because yes. the circuits are cylindrical. The sheaths are cylindrical coming in as charge in the Birkeland current from the north and south poles. So the shapes appear easily enough once a bucket is spinning at a rate of one to seven revolutions. Seven, seven. That's, that's a very yeah. important. That's seven days of the week, friend. Yep. Where seven. It comes from. Is it's also literally where it comes from. It's yeah. Time. It's on Saturday. Seven rotations. Yep. Yeah. Six in six days on the seventh day you rested. Seventh day creates the uh, outside sheath of the layer of rotation of the. Uh, it is the outside layer of a boundary condition of a Birkeland current, which is, I was the first one to start talking about this now. Um, Jim Weninger and uh, see the pattern are talking about it quite extensively um, and this is indeed we're starting to see what's probably happening so these astrophysicists that I've been working with are uh, are leaning towards the same direction which they've all I've helped them through capitation they've helped me through you know many different uh, avenues so working with people is great uh, and highly um, um, co collaborative projects uh, or just, you know, you see something that someone else sees and they see a similarity and they do a tiny little project. Either way, this this is gorgeous. So Thomas Bohr and colleagues made plexiglass buckets 13 to 20 centimeters across with metal bottoms that could be rotated at high speeds by a motor. They filled the bucket with water and spun the bottom to whip up the liquid into a pool that rose up on sides of the container. This up is this set up is very similar to the rotating bucket that Isaac Newton used in the 17th century to investigate centrifugal forces. Okay, this is not new. This is about the oldest yeah. form 
This is the oldest form of A, alchemy, B, um, uh, what is it, mind science, science. It's all mind science. Mind. <laughs> Um, this is where the, the pre-Socratic philosophers came together and, and they, uh, uh, there's certain names, I forgot their Annex Mander, a pre-Socratic philosopher, he was attributed with describing the whole universe as vortices and subset vortices that are nested within vortices. And it's just like, that's and exactly those vortices what are actually Torah. You can see it in a witch's cauldron when you freaking do a witch's brew. Not yeah. saying that I'm a witch or other people do do witch's brew, but I'm saying it's the same damn thing. You know, that it's like it scares people. It's like, oh, he's making a potion. What's he gonna do? He's gonna stir it. Uh oh, you're gonna stir it next. What's he gonna do next? Oh, then it creates that geometry that's necessary, you know. But well, it creates mathematics, it creates number, um, because those vortices they are they they're additive. That's kind of how color works. Is they're additive, they're multiplicative, right? They, uh, it is There's number right? fundamentally, There's and that's more. where I'm hoping ultimately to get people to to understand is the right. essence of or and how number really drives all of this. The essence right. of number drives all of this. There's so there's a center coming. here. There's a yeah. center here. When the center's rotated through uh, through finer, um, where's the Man, that's like a Planck scale center too. I'm way out of my notes here. Oh, the the wavelengths, the the finer wavelengths that are produces, and the short wavelengths, they produce rotation, and there's not there's locked nodes of points that are here inside of these, and I can show you these right here inside the chat. I shared a bunch of these, and by looking at these without a doubt, uh, this is how I was going to show us. Um, the intricacies of how it's undeniable um, when you see there's a circle here that's literally where the circle is there's mm -hmm. a, and they pinch right in here is the vortex there's a black hole a pinch right here a lens a pinch there's a flow in and an outflow there's the inflow which is the the flow the gravitative vortex moving towards the center and then there's the radiative vortex that's moving away from the center that's what walter russell was talking about and, yep. you, and and you put it inside of all of everything inside of every doplet of water and how it vibrates and the memory boom there's the pinch boom there's the pinch boom there's the energy boom there's the energy that's exactly where the lens of life is this is the counter space, the counter space where it's going in, implosive. That's where it's exploding, explosive. You can see the teardrops moving in the, uh, it, filling the exact gaps here that are necessary to fill the voids. This type of ginkgo biloba pattern right here, that's one of the most iconic patterns of the Doherty set. And that's the same thing as a fungus. You can see, you can literally see how it rides these layers. These layers are where they break, where the waves come in, come in, come in, come in, and, and where the waves layers, buddy, are they are three, six, nine. They're like temporal. They're like temporal walls. Um, they, they're, they're these are all fundamentally by three, six, and nine. I can show it off as one. These are literally, this is one. Well, yeah, first sphere. It starts. This, this is the first sphere. But then on the inside, this, this sphere is the first sphere off. This is the first sphere off. This is the first. So this is like indicative of the first gate, which would be why water freezes, you know, in the hexagonal pattern. Because the hexagon, hexagonal pattern is the, is, what how charge compression who compactification pressure uh it's wind. the structure of the field it, it is literally the structure of the field you can go through yeah. one after the next after the next Hang that's on. what those three rings are they're hexagons there's there's it's a vector equilibrium literal circles right here 
This is the pentagonal uh, grid. This is a brand new one. I don't think I've ever introduced it yet, but this is how I do all my new bubble sculpting in the, into the uh, dodecahedrons that I build. So I, I do truncated uh, hyperbolic dodecahedrons um, and they're the, this is the grid that I use to make them all. And this, the, literally this image, you can make so many different shapes three-dimensionally with it. But look at how that fits right there, that color. Boom, 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 right along uh, the perfect spots for, for the energy to sit. So this is predictive. So you can use this to know how to, um, how, how to propel for advanced propulsion techniques inside of plasma thrusters um, but based off of where the spheres are, how the spheres linearly line up and scale in stacking order. Uh, but look at this, dude. It's just, it's gorgeous. This is our DNA. This is, you know, I don't know what frequency this is, but it's a frequency that matches perfectly with, with, um, the Doherty set here, you know. Well, I see it's de de definitely directly related to the chestahedron uh, through the, the 56, the pentagram, and the hexagram. There's and that's your... where 11 really, uh, as a birthing center, comes from. This is so much interference. This whole thing is interference. You have the outer that's interfering with the inner imploding mm -hmm. this Vajra. You want to see how Vajras are made? Outside charge pushing, creating an enveloping charge, pulling, pinching it off around the uh, where the interference happens. And there's the wave, or there's the wavelet, the two spheres, which is the lens. There's the lens. So time and time again, you can see how this is all lined up and related and how aliens freaking pop out of the woodwork <laughs> in this picture apparently i think the most important thing is it uh it reinforces the the concept of unity um that, that that's what we're moving into to show that all is one um this is a geometric law right so, so this is something that's um not up for discussion it speaks for itself and that that's yeah. what people they need to to latch on to is um, this is truth, right? Yeah. And it's not something that's debatable. <laughs> yeah, don't take my word for it. No. Look, this is implosive right here, pinching. This is explosive right here, pinching. And you can totally see it. You can totally see how it follows the vortex. Well, it's just like the spinning bucket. I mean, how do you, how do you argue with that, friends? Please. Give me a second here. Well, I wanted to show these images because they're uh, that you you once you see them, you can't go back, you know. And this is a painting that some. This is a painting that somebody uh, painted having to do with all the grandparents that passed away during this COVID that weren't allowed to see their grandchildren. Yeah. And I'm one of these grandchildren here that wasn't able to see my grandma. Um, Sorry. Yeah. So this picture speaks a lot to me and I hope it speaks to the viewers. I'm not sure the painter of it. I guess I should be better with my sources. But. There's one, man. You painted it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have these, we have these diatoms, and this is the same thing here. You know, this is this is created out of sound and falls down a brine channel that's cylindrical, and it, and it probably has everything to do with what builds its shape. Yep. It so, can't be any other way, buddy. Right. We need to start embracing that, right? That's the is that it can't okay. be any other. You need to leave. Sorry. All right, man.
Yes, Chris. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you for being here. This is a this is a shorter episode, and I think we conquered a lot. I'm glad that we compactified it. Um, you know, I really appreciate you being here and uh, and adding your uh, your, co- oh, this, your. This is really important. It is so fundamental to everything that we're doing. To to um, because it's the link for the the people that don't have the the perspective, the proper awareness to be able to um, assimilate this information is this is something that they can look at as tangible, right? It's it's really important to leverage cymatics as a tool to increase awareness, right, into the the immaculate nature of creation and how sure. how beautiful and more importantly, spinning buckets, how 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 simple it really is. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. It's go go out there, spin spin yeah. your surroundings spin your clouds spin your buckets and spin <laughs> and see the geometry of spin it's beautiful it doesn't have to be spun as a bad thing even yeah. though it creates a lot of chaos sometimes spin is good you know chaos it, is necessary it is yeah. there's All no right, growth brother. Out, man. have a good day well thank you have a great weekend and i'll uh see you next weekend all right man Thanks. Peace. The Geometric View is a Love is Watching product. A Love is Watching being. Thank you for doing that. Keep your eyeballs out. Pay attention. There's a lot going down this year. Be vigilant. Be mindful. Be insightful. Be loving. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being kind. Share the love. Spread the love. Become the love. Amen. Thank you for being here. On episode 33, season 3, The Geometry of Cymatics. Uh huh. Awesome! 10,000 legions! What the?
I'm riding or whether I'm driving as long as I'm riding with you. It don't matter whether we're riding or whether we're driving as long as I'm riding with you. It don't matter whether we're riding or whether we're driving as long as I'm riding with you. It don't matter whether we're riding or whether we're driving as long as I'm riding with you. The person to burden your emergency's a first hand, urgency's a second hand, supply and demand, a fine and definitive individual man, not a division, but a source code, not a kiss and a toad and it turn into a prince, not a turtle and a herd, not a fair tale, not a narrative, not a nursery rhyme, not an aeroplane on a water plane with this real life in the tank of the truth. Parallel to perfect air, and up a curtain tear, and up a harrigan, Nancy Kerrigan, fair skin, hairpins, nails, her tail spin, sonic speed, honestly, all I need is the good weed and a beer. And I beat you with a curse word Where verbs are pressure where the wound bleeds In order to swoon me a spoon feed Come by, I killed him with the curfew option Curfew option the bippity boppity boo The vapor that comes out of you The people arrive and you have your spirit Cause you have none Around all I am is infinity. All that you can see, all that we are, all that we go to.